the main idea that I'm looking at when we you know, look at the sine graph, or you know, the main important thing, if we want to graph y equals cosecant of x, we want to look at what we understand the most about cosecant. And that would be the reciprocal function sine, right? Cosine, I'm sorry, sine and cosecant are reciprocals of one another, right? They're kind of like siblings, right? They're polar opposites of each other, but they're siblings. You know, and we think about that from triangles. Triangle, the sine of an angle was opposite over hypotenuse. The cosecant was hypotenuse over opposite. When we think about points on the unit circle, the sine coordinate was y, and the cosecant was 1 over y, right? And we used the unit circle last class period to graph the sine function. And we kind of primarily focused on like the first quadrant and then like found all those points. But I think most importantly for today's lesson is knowing these coordinate points. And I don't think these coordinate points are going to be very difficult for you guys to say, OK, yeah, I don't need to get flashcards and memorize these. I kind of understand if we have a unit circle, those x and y intercepts are going to be at those points, right? OK, now when looking at, so if we look at the sine function, so if we looked at you know, y equals sine of x, right, which was the y coordinate, we could see at the angle 0, sine was 0. At the angle pi halves, sine of pi halves was 1. At pi, the sine is 0. At 3 pi halves, the sine was negative 1. And then at 2 pi, it was 2 pi, or is at 2 pi, the sine was 0. And then by plugging in additional points, we came up with a shape of the graph that looks something like this. Right? Quick little review. Got it? All right. So let's kind of do the same process with cosecant. But instead of doing every single point, let's just focus on these major intercepts. And remember, sine is 1 over y. So if I look at 1 over the y coordinate at the angle 0, I'm at 1 over 0, which is now 1 over 0 is undefined. In last class period, we graphed undefined values using a asymptote. So Nice little asymptote here. When we go to pi halves, 1 over 1 is just 1. At pi, we're at 1 over 0. So again, we can see that this is a vertical asymptote. And then at 3 pi halves, again, we're at um, neg or Sorry, no wonder I get confused. That's a negative 1. So we have a point at negative 1. And then at 2 pi, again, we have a nice asymptote. Does everybody see that? Now, I don't want you to confuse the cosecant graph with the sine graph, so I am going to kind of dash this. Because we're just using this as an aid to help us understand the cosecant graph. And then, obviously, as you guys can see here in your notes, we could easily find these points if we were to go back and find the reciprocal of all the y coordinates and then plug them in our calculator and find the decimal values. And what we would figure out is that the graph of cosecant takes this shape. All right, So you can see how it's like this mere reflection of the sine graph. right? And that's very important. Wherever there was an x-intercept of sine is now an asymptote for cosecant. And that makes sense, because when sine is 0, cosecant has to be undefined, because it's the reciprocal. Um, and you can see the shape of the graph is kind of like these mere, like the reciprocal parabola is going in the opposite direction. So rather than trying to like memorize what the cosecant looks like, my idea is I'm pretty well adverse with the sine graph. I can just know how to graph the sine and then kind of use that information to identify what the cosecant graph would look like. Does that make sense? It's also very important to understand what um, the characteristics now of this graph. You can see this graph is decreasing when sine would have been increasing. It's increasing when sine is decreasing. Sine is decreasing, cosecant's increasing, right? See that relationship that it's kind of playing? Like those are, the maximum is like the minimum of the sine, right? The minimum is now the maximum. So you can see that relationship between the cosecant and secant plays out not just in, tri not just in our triangles, but in the graph. Um, now let's go and take a look at the main thing that we're going to be looking at as far as our domain range. So the range of the sine graph is from negative 1 is from negative 1 to 1, right? And you can see how that plays a role in the cosecant graph, because the cosecant graph has a range basically of everything except negative 1 to 1, right? It only occurs from negative infinity to the lowest point to the minimum of the sine graph, which is negative 1. And then it skips over that graph, and it starts again at the, at the maximum of the sine graph, 
up to infinity. So we write the range of this parent graph from negative infinity to negative 1. Negative 1 is a point, though, right? We found that point from the inner circle. So it's included. And then we're that good, nice little union symbol. To find the asymptotes, you can see that this, um, this graph is uh, not continuous, just like the tangent graph. There's undefined values. Now, the period is still 2 pi. It still takes a distance of 2 pi for the graph to repeat itself. Um, but you can see that within the period, we now have asymptotes. right? And so we want to look at where do these asymptotes occur. Well, the first asymptote occurs at 0. So I can say asymptote. That is going to be at x equals 0. And then how far is it to the next asymptote? P -p -p pi. So I can add pi. And then to the next asymptote would be pi. To the next one would be pi and pi. So then what operation do we use to represent repeated addition? Multiplication. OK, so we're going to multiply. But what number would we multiply? How many, number, how many pi's can we keep on adding? So what number should we multiply? Yeah, and well, the answer, I mean, yes, you can go to infinity. But in reality, like we want to have a number that it, we want to have something that can represent any number, positive or negative, because we can go in the negative direction as well. So the best use of this, um, since since infinity is not a number or can't represent a number, but we can use a variable, and in this case, we're going to use the variable n. You could use k, you could use a, you could use whatever you want to, but typically we're going to use n or k. Now, do we really need to write zero plus pi n, or could we just say pi n? Pi n kind of makes sense, right? So that is the representation. That is where the asymptotes occur on this parent graph. And then if we want to look at the domain, it's going to be all real numbers except for where those asymptotes occur. So I'm not going to be, don't be too concerned about the set notation for this. Um, but domain is going to be all real numbers such that x cannot equal pi n. Just in case you guys see it, I'm not going to ask you guys to um, write the domain. For this, um, my main concern, though, is for you guys to find the asymptotes. So if um, that's what we want to focus on for that.